So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we know if, if negative 4i is a 0, then we also know that what else has to be a 0? Positive 4i, right? So we can say x equals negative 4i and x equals positive 4i. Now, forget about the i for a second. When we were doing these types of problems, when I gave you a 0 and then I said, here's our function, what did we do to find the remaining factors to help us find the other zeros? We had to apply a certain process in the back, somebody in the back table. Any process we had to? What process did I do? I even showed you the example it was on your homework quiz. What did we do? What process did we do? Yes? Didn't you have to plug it in for the x or no? We could plug it in. We could plug it in for the x to determine if it is a no, zero. No, the h. Yeah, yeah, never mind. But what did we do? I, I find all the zero. To find the remaining zeros, I have to find the remaining factors. Once I find the remaining factors, I can set the factor equal to zero to solve. So how do I find the remaining factors? I have to apply something. Exactly, synthetic division. So, oh crap, our zero is negative four. How are we going to do synthetic division with an imaginary number? Just like we do synthetic division with a real number. Just because it's imaginary, don't hold a grudge against it, okay? So, we take our coefficients, make sure they're in um, semi order. Negative 1, 2, negative 16, and 32. Alright? So now, the first thing we do is we bring down the negative 1. Now, negative 1 times um, negative 4i is going to be a is a what? Four. Is a positive four i, right? Yeah. Now, two plus four i is going to be a what? Huh? Now we need to multiply two plus four i times negative four i. Negative 16, 16 I squared, so, so positive 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 positive. Positive. which is positive 16. Um, Those cancel out, so you're just left with negative 8i. And, and that becomes a 32i squared times negative 1, which is a negative 32. Okay. Then that becomes a 0. So now you say, okay, um, you gave us one factor, but now you just gave us a quotient. Now that is a pretty crazy quotient, right? If I was going to write that as a polynomial, that would be your remainder, constant, linear, and quadratic, right? So I would say negative 1 plus 2 plus 4i x, you don't need to write this down, minus 8i is my other factor. And that's x squared, sorry. Right? Just say, Mr. McCoy, that's a factor. How am I going to find the other zeros from that? Right? Isn't that kind of crazy? All right. So let's not worry about that then. What I can do, though, is I need to find, I can still, if this is a factor, I need to still get this down to something I can work with. Right? I need to get this down to something either I can factor with real numbers, not this imaginary right. stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, we determined, yes? Um, how do you, wait, when you multiply a negative, 8i and negative 4i, how'd you get, because I have the i to just go, oh, never mind. Because, okay, yeah. got it, good. Um, so now what I can do, though, is I determined that if negative 4i was a 0, we also determined that 4i was a 0, right? So guess what? Let's do synthetic division again with the other 0. So I'll do 4i. And now... If I know that I need to simplify this, I'll just take the coefficients of this term, which are negative 1, 2 plus 4i, and negative 8i. Right? Because those are the coefficients of my resultant, or my quotient factor. So now, let's do synthetic division again. Bring down the negative 1. Negative 1 times 4i is negative 4i. 2 plus negative 4i is 2. 2 times 4i is 8i, which is 0. Remainder, 
constant linear. Negative x plus 2. So that's my last factor. So if that's my factor, so I have negative x plus 2. That's a factor. All of my zeros I can write as factors, which would be x plus 4i times x minus 4i. And when I write my linear factorization, that means I take my polynomial and I write it as a product of all of its linear factors. This multiplied by this by this, this equals my what? My h of x, my function, right? So you could say that this is what my polynomial work looks like. But once I have it all factored out, it says find all the zeros. So I set equal to zero. Now I'm not going to set all these equal to zero because it already set, I already set these equal to zero, right? I already know the zeros are plus or minus 4i. But I never did set up negative x plus 2. It's 2. So therefore, x equals 2, negative 4i, and 4i. Those are going to be all my zeros. So I took one zero, and I found all the remaining zeros. All right? You guys want to know another way how to do that? I'll get some kind of addition. Oh, wait, I've got a shape. Yes, sir. Um, never mind. OK. If you guys like synthetic division, that's cool.